this is the video which is in kind of extension to video number nine and this uh, today we will discuss in detail uh, how non sap or a third party system integration with central finance is possible so this is for those people who are trying to connect any non sap system to central finance uh, via to, for the purpose of replication and for the purpose of uh, integrating in the landscape so first let's understand what are non sap systems so we generally call them non sap or third party you will see these terms interchangeably because sap classifies everything as third party which is non sap system so any erp system which is not an sap system is considered as non sap or third party like dynamics navision oracle jd edwards or any other system uh, in in the technology area so that's that's a that's a thumb rule and SAP treats them as non-SAP or you can say third party. So whenever I say non-SAP or third party, either of the word, uh, you should use them interchangeably. So how, how the architecture looks like. So if you see the standard architecture, this is the way it looks like. Even for the non -S for the SAP system, it looks like the same way. In on the first block, if you see it's written third party, it's, it's generally written uh, SAP systems, uh, ECC. And here we have third party system. Let's assume we have an example of Oracle. So we have Oracle system on the source and then on the right hand side we have SAP uh, central finance system which is S4HANA. And in the middle we have SLT replication server. So if you see in middle box we have two components. One is SLT replication server a little right side and then we have uh, staging tables, uh, journal entry header, entry item, debit item, and then some examples with some customer extension. And it is going back and forward uh, into the replication server. So here the idea is that uh, this box is to be adjusted with additional uh, software. It can be bought data services uh, or anything else where your uh, data from third party system should come sit you transform it and then after transformation you put it into slt server in the staging area i'll explain you what that staging area is for now it is not that important the important part here is that if you have oracle system you need to ensure that the system is reading getting the triggers uh, whenever there is a transaction posted there is a trigger generated at each trigger there is a document being sent to the let's say data services and here the staging tables exist uh, not the staging tables of slt but the staging tables of the tool itself let's say data services you do the transformation and i will explain you what the transformation i'm talking about then after the transformation the data goes to slt staging table which is standard sap please note it is standard sap and then via normal processes go to central finance system. So there are a few components which I need to explain you in this architecture. Uh, let's go, go there. Uh, before I go to that component, uh, I will want to explain you, yes, mappings. So mappings are managed in MDG Lite. However, I was just telling you the transformation. So if you see here my example in non-SAP, the percentage tax code, for example, in SAP, we have tax code like V0, A V1, V2, uh, 0 is exempt. And then we have A1, A2, A4, like input, input and output tax. In other system, it's not that, you know, always we can have same thing. So they say, for example, tax 5%. So if you see the characters now, we have uh, almost 10 plus characters. But in SAP, the tax code is only two characters. So this transformation has to happen outside stage SLT staging table you convert your non sap data into sap data in this for, uh, in the right format and then you load that data into staging tables and there are a standard uh, i would not say standard sap but sap partner tools with magnitude or sanity that can be explored so this is the transformation i was talking about now let's go back now if you see again this particular story so you transform, you replicate, you extract the data from third party system, you transform the values which are not matching, you put it into SLT staging tables and then from SLT staging tables is go into central finance system. So that's a broad, broad architecture. How those central finance, uh, how those SLT staging tables will be activated? This is where the summary is. You have an SAP node, 
you install the replication content and in staging table these are the tables which get created so header item accounting document item debit item because creditor item tax item so you have several i'll not read everything so you have all those tables getting generated in slt itself and then after that you need to set up the load object so you have the load object you have replication object so these are standard sap objects which are given by sap itself so you don't need to worry if once you install the right nodes implement oss nodes uh, you will get all those content activated so that's how slt works with that slt note slt you will have this get this uh, excel file and this is an example of what that field uh, uh, the table we just activated contains so if you see example each uh, table contains all the detailed field with what are the how the mapping will happen how the what are the field characters it is it numeric or is it a text field what are the size of the field it includes everything so this is a standard content uh, an informational excel file is provided with the sap note so that's how slt is managed so i explained you this uh, the trigger process then it comes to non sap no, it comes to data services where you transform you change the terms uh, or the right values then it goes to slt staging table so these are the staging tables and then from staging tables it goes into uh, central finance and while it is going to central finance it passes through aif so if you see here highlighted in green uh, we have a accounting document external interface and accounting document another external interface for create and change so any document coming from any non sap system will only pass on this through these two contents so this is uh, you can say the staging tables you generated in slt will get loaded into this uh, uh, external interface in aif so any success or any failure will be visible here so you can say okay something is passed you will see in this particular uh, under the fin cf namespace in this interface even failures you will see in this namespace so here it shows all your success and failures so these are again standard uh, content standard aif uh, namespace fin cf and under that standard interface is provided by sap now we have a question uh, this somebody asked me this question what what happen if the source system has of course you know source system can allow i don't know uh, oracle or jd edwards can allow more than triple nine lines in one document but sap ecc doesn't so what happen if in the source document you have more than triple line for example 2000 lines debits and credits so posting a financial accounting document with more than triple nine line items in non sap source system so central finance requires splitting of the document into two or more document depending on the number of items if it is 3000 you need more you need to divide it into multiple documents document is split it supported for outgoing invoices incoming invoices gl posting and material movement posting so this is supported by sap but yes you have to tweak and tweak uh, play around uh, do some more configuration and then it is doing so you have to especially take care of this particular area uh, where consultants struggle to how to ensure that all your more than triple nine lines uh, reach to the uh, central finance space and they have to go to in a sequential way otherwise the document is not complete mappings i explained mappings are managed in mdg light fins underscore cfin underscore map underscore manage uh, you convert this transformation happens outside central finance and this transformation can be done by the tools available i don't recommend or i don't uh, project any tool it is just an examples given of course you know you can build your own custom tools custom interfaces uh, depending on the level of maturity and it digital uh, maturity you have now the question comes how the reconciliation happens so reconciliation standard reports work but please ensure that the standard reports since here it is on source side it's non sap system it does not go and read the tables of the source system it only reads the slt tables because now what is what we are doing is we extract from non sap convert it and put it into slt staging tables and from there it goes into cfin so this reconciliation is only available with slt staging tables not with what is happening before slt staging tables so that reconciliation has to be customer specific nothing is provided as of now so that's all for today i think uh, it gives more clarity on how non sap systems are integrated it is one of the interesting question people are asking me that's why i created this video if you combine video number 9 uh, and video number 24 you will get an end to end overview of how 
uh, non SAP systems can be integrated. However, if you still have questions, feel free to put it in the in the comment box, and I will be happy to answer it. Take it up in the next video when I when I pick up another topic. And nevertheless, I'll not say it again. But last comment: Do like, share, do like the videos, put your comments, experience, questions you have in the comment section, and. Thank you so much for today.